we ask your help. We are aware of the complete trust we must have in God's mercy and love. Intercede with God to give us the strong faith to live with the sorrows and trials of life and help us to see in our troubles God's guiding Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate, is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. As the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we've come to the end of our solemn novena to St. Jude, and throughout this novena, we have been walking with St. Jude through the pandemic of COVID-19 to life. We started with the call of St. Jude, and we proceeded to think about our response to that call. We considered the image of St. Jude, the beautiful image. We considered the flame on his head, symbolizing the Holy Spirit. The tunic's color, symbolizing hope. The Persian, whom St. Jude, according to tradition, 
brought Jesus' healing to. The martyrdom that Jude gave his life for his Lord and Savior. Trust, the attitude that every disciple must develop. And finally, we've come to life. Jesus says in the Gospel today, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. We're walking with St. Jude through the pandemic to life. We made it. <laughs> life. Life is the goal and life is also the process. We're in the middle of life. The life that we are walking to is a life that we even begin to taste right now with Jesus Christ. It's a life in Christ, a life lived in his spirit, in his love, which makes all the difference. When I was a seminarian, and maybe you've heard this saying before, we used to joke with one another, especially as we were facing papers, assignments, difficult conversations. We would joke saying, life is hard, and then you die. <laughs> life is hard, and then you die. And that's true. We all die. Death has a 100% rate for all human beings. But life is also very beautiful. Even though it can be a struggle, life every day is a gift from God. And we are walking through this pandemic to life, to a deeper life with God, a deeper life in sharing with each other. Each of our lives is interesting. We have ups and downs. We have sins, yes. But we also have a lot of really good stuff. The quality of our life is perhaps being tested in these times. Affliction is testing our mettle. But every aspect of our life is important. Because Jesus came, as he says in the Gospel, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. He wants us to have his life even in the midst of the pandemic. Even if you are suffering from COVID-19, Jesus wants life for you. He wants to support you and hold you and keep you close to himself. For all those who are suffering, for the first responders and our medical workers, Jesus wants his life to course through their veins and to beat in their hearts as they serve their needy brothers and sisters. I grew up listening to wonderful musicals, and one of those musicals was Fiddler on the Roof, where there's a beautiful Jewish-style anthem to life. And the words of this song are, to life, to life, l'chaim, 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 to life. And if our good fortune never comes, here's to whatever comes. Drink L'chaim to life! <laughs> I like that song. And it concords with our theme. Even when we're suffering, even if we're not going through the best of times, we can still celebrate our life. As long as we have breath to breathe, as long as we are able to love and serve, our life is a true gift from God. The song goes, continues going, Life has a way of confusing us, blessing and bruising us. Yes, 
blessing and bruising us, life does. But it's still a beautiful life, even with its suffering. And Christ makes sense of all the suffering. He doesn't erase it all the time. He doesn't take away the suffering, but he gives us the power to live it. In our St. Jude Novena, we have kind of a peculiar prayer that whenever I pray it, I wonder, do I really believe this? The prayer which we say it in the Novena, and you can find it in your booklet, says, may we see in our pain, in our struggles, God's guiding hand. That God can even be working and molding us and proving us through trial, through suffering, through struggle. Jesus calls to us today. He says, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I would just like to leave you with scripture to reflect on as we conclude this novena and wonder about, well, if this is all true, how do I sh live my life right now? How do I let God into my life, into my heart? How do I have trust? Jesus shows us the way. And I invite you to read the whole chapter of Romans chapter 8, because you will find many answers to life in Christ in this chapter. But I will just hit some of the most beautiful, at least for me, the beautiful parts of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. The sufferings are strong and the sufferings can sometimes feel overwhelming, but St. Paul tells us they're nothing compared to the glory that God has prepared for us. And then Romans 8, chapter 20, verse 28. We know that all things work for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. All things work for the good. Even pandemic, God can turn it around and make it work for the good of our souls, for the good of our lives. We can find good even in this. Romans 8, chapter, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? In other words, my brother or my sister, you cannot fail. If you love God, yeah, you can suffer. Yeah, you can have hard times. Yeah, you can be at your wit's end. Yeah, you can be, you know, blown away and not know what to do. But you cannot fail. If God is for us, who can be against us? So we conclude our solemn novena to St. Jude today. Normally we would have the veneration of the relics of St. Jude for our devotees who are present at the Mass. Since it's only Father Byron and myself, uh, we can't do that. But Father Byron, in all of our names, in my name and in your name, all who are watching this novena through, through YouTube and through Facebook and through our webpage, all of you may virtually kiss the relic of St. Jude and bring whatever hurts, whatever fears you have, just bring them to this kiss of the relic 
When we kiss a relic, it means we're trying to be in touch with God's presence in that saint. So Saint Jude is in heaven, his relic is here on earth, but Jude is in heaven, and Jude is praying for us so that Jesus' words may be fulfilled. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So now we will have this veneration of the relic of St. Jude Thaddeus.
Let us pray. Glorious Apostle and Martyr, St. Jude Thaddeus, you used your gifts and talents to bring Christ's love to many people. Pray for us today that the love of Christ may increase in our lives. May we safely reach heaven to adore with you the Most Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We share now some of the letters of gratitude that have come to the National Shrine of St. Jude. J.D. of Carlisle, Pennsylvania writes, In high school, a friend of mine introduced me to St. Jude. We would say the prayer together on our way to school to pass our algebra tests, and we always did. In the fall of 1964, I prayed to pass my state nursing boards for Pennsylvania. After 40 years as an emergency room nurse, I am now retired, but still a faithful devotee of St. Jude. C.A. of El Centro, California writes, in February, my 58-year-old father was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. All but one of the major arteries of his heart were completely plugged. He had five bypasses, and when he came home, he couldn't sleep for more than 10 to 15 minutes before waking up frightened. I asked St. Jude to help my father get some sleep, as he had helped to pull him through the operation. Following that prayer, my father began sleeping for longer and longer periods. Now he is back to work and sleeps the whole night. I am so happy and thankful to St. Jude. W.R. of Cary, North Carolina writes, I wish to acknowledge St. Jude for his speeding response to my prayer for help with my son. My husband and I had very difficult times with him and tried to help him function in society, but he just would not cooperate. The day after I said my first prayer to St. Jude, my son began looking for work. In a very short time, he found a job and is beginning to show signs of becoming a self-sustaining adult. I will continue to pray to St. Jude. Let us pray together the prayer for particular needs. St. Jude, the Church honors you universally as the patron of hopeless and difficult cases. Pray for us in our needs. Make use, we implore you, of this powerful privilege given to you to bring visible and speedy help where help is needed. Pray that we humbly accept the trials, disappointments, and mistakes which are a part of human nature. Help us to see the reflection of the suffering of Christ and the tribulations of our own lives. Let us see in a spirit of great faith and hope the part we even now share in the joy of Christ's resurrection, in which we long to share fully in heaven. If it is God's desire for us, we seek the following favors. St. Jude, we ask that all be accomplished according to the will of God, and thank you for your intercession in response to our prayers. Amen.
through the intercession of St. Jude Thaddeus, Martyr and Apostle of Christ, may all of you be blessed and may your intentions and your prayers be hidden through the help of St. Jude Thaddeus. Father in union 
with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us take five minutes of reflection and silence and encountry with God and the Blessed Son. Christ, you gave us the Eucharist 
as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Thy 